All right, this is Editor John here. I tried to condense this down into a smaller video, um, but it just rambled on because I do. So I'm going to do a new format. These are going to be longer videos. I didn't want to split it in half. Um, I call these Fireside Chat, although I'm not going to set these on fire. But Fireside Chat video coming up. It's a little longer. Um, hopefully it's interesting for you. Um, good luck with it. Games Workshop's on my shit list. Alrighty, it is Saturday morning, dogs are fed and watered, the wife is left for the day to see her sister, um, I got coffee, I got some notes, and there's something that I've been thinking about, well, for quite a long time, but last night I was really thinking about it for whatever reason, and it wasn't a full moon or anything, but I'd like to do a video on, and maybe get some thoughts in the comments about the Napster effect. Are you mental? So, for those old enough to remember back in the day, a platform came out on the internet when it was young and squishy called Napster, where people could get all their songs for free because a physical product, a CD, vinyl, LP, whatever, that evolved into an electronic product. And then because it was an electronic product, the distribution of it became electronic, i.e. over the internet. Now, that's happened with music, and that's happened with films. With 3D printing, that's also happened with models. So that's what I call the Napster effect. Uh, an attitude towards printing models, which just, it's gotta, it's gotta be dealt with. And the music industry didn't deal with it quick enough, and they suffered until they adapted. Um, same with the uh, same with the the film industry, and you know, um, I think you know there are many industries slowly over time are going to have to adapt to this. So um, uh, let's crack on. Uh oh, the hermit's been thinking. Okay, um, one of the first things. So uh, let me reach. If anybody gets a chance to get a hold of this and read this. It's called Talking Miniatures. I think this is what might put my mind on this track because um, it's anecdotes in the history of Early Games Workshop, how the Perry Twins um, got started um, and what their process was for creating miniatures. So basically, <laughs> um, you know, with green stuff. And if you look at a lot of the early miniatures, you know, um, you can tell that they're not digitally created. So my point being is that now we have uh, 3D programs where people, and it's, the bar's been lowered. There are a lot of very clever people and talented people that sculpt digitally. So now you have, instead of a select few people and it's a niche, you have a lot of people doing 3D uh, sculpting. So on the creator level, that has exploded due to PCs and software. Um, so people that always wanted to, you know, sculpt but never knew how to, or you know, maybe didn't have the ambidex, sorry, or maybe didn't have the dexterity to do it manually with their fingers, like me. Um, you can get on and do it uh, digitally, you know, on a computer. You know, and, and it's basically lowered the bar of entry for people that want to do that. So as a result, we have a lot of sculptors out there now that enjoy doing it. It's a passion, um, you know, even for our niche. You have some doing, you know, parts for radio controlled cars, etc. But, you know, let's keep this into the model miniatures hobby. So, you know, a lot more creators than they used to be. Lovely. Now you have, you know, people outside of, let's call it the institution, <laughs> um, that are creating these, you know, and, I, and some of them are top of the line really good. So, you know, that getting the sculpt isn't an issue anymore. And they're not that expensive. For example, I'll pay for the Warmaster, I paid $60 for everything I'll ever need in that army to print.
So the stable of STLs is good. So the next, the next issue with the 3D printing is intellectual property concerns and revenue protection. So Games Workshop stance is that 3D printing hasn't really affected them. And to a point, you know, I think that's true. Um, because there's two, yeah, two reasons. So I printed, I printed my Toonkin's army. I bought their product. Didn't use hardly any of the plastic in there. Just printed my army just because. Are you mental? Um, now the reason that hasn't hurt their revenue is any of these models, should I want to buy them, they're out of stock. There aren't any. And I don't, you know, I think that's done on purpose, but... You know, so really by printing uh, third-party chariot models, third-party uh, sneaky rider people, all of that, third-party swarms, you know, I haven't taken any money away from Games Workshop because there's nothing in the cart to buy. You know, so, and I'm pretty sure that's the way they've designed this. Um, so... Has 3D printing hurt Games Workshop? A lot of people say, yes, it has. I don't think it has to, a, to now because of their business strategy. However, I think it might in the future, and we'll be getting to that later. The other reason that it's not going to hurt Games Workshop as much if they adapt, which they're doing, is that they, although they say, well, they have set up to now, primarily we are a miniature making company um, they've shifted that over time to become you know ip company that is they have intellectual property um, and a good enough following where that intellectual property is actually worth something they've renamed most of their stuff one of the reasons why hammer fantasy battle died really was ip you cannot elves orcs goblins you can't copyright those so you have to rename things um, which they've done. The, the 40K, you know, somewhat... I mean, really, though, can you copyright Space Marine? It's a Marine in space. It's a descriptor. It's a soldier that is based on a ship is a Marine, and the ship is a spaceship. Therefore, it's a Space Marine. I don't know. Let's copyright the whole human language. Stop whining! Anyway, not a rant video. <laughs> Stop being so negative. So I was thinking about if I were Games Workshop, I mean, or you know, business, any business in general facing this dilemma is, um, you know, how do you adapt your business model? As if I'm selling well, a physical 3D model, and somebody can turn that into, you know, and you know take that and make it an electronic product and sell it over the internet with no production costs, no distribution costs, no brick and mortar buildings, you know, and sell 10,000 of them. In this couple of ways, what they have to do is embrace it. You know, you cannot fight it. The record companies found out, I mean, Lars from Metallica made himself like one of the most unpopular people on the planet when he started suing his own fans. So, you know, there's a case in point don't attack your fans for making things that at the moment you're not selling or you're out, you know, you've outpriced them or whatever, for whatever reason. Um, you have to embrace your community as well as the technology. So really the best way of doing that is at least for games workshop, I think, and it's in place. They've got that Warhammer plus thing club that you join. I looked at it, but you don't really get anything out of it. Look, nothing I want. There might be other people, but I, I was looking and like, well, you know, the TV stuff is pretty lame because YouTube exists. Um, and there's a lot of really good people on YouTube doing stuff. So why would I spend extra to get the ones that you've kind of either bullied into joining your channel and, or, you know, thrown money at to go on your channel? You know, I can do without those guys if they're going to jump ship and, and watch YouTube. It's just basic human nature. You know, if I can get the same or equivalent for free, I'm going to get the same or equivalent for free. Um, so they've got this Warhammer Plus thing, which really doesn't have that much in it 
for a subscription. If they threw in STL of the month or, you know, STL groups of the month or old stuff that they don't produce, like they're trying to do with the old world, bring back all the old models. If they brought back all the old models as STLs, you know, then I would probably join it. And I think a lot of people that are printing their own armies would probably join it because they're using the nostalgia to get money from people immediately without production costs, without retooling, without all the other stuff. If they were going for the nostalgia hit, that's the way to do it. Now, they probably don't have those models in STL format, to be honest. So, because it's all green stuff. And their only strength right now, which is also their hindrance there, is that 3D scanning technology isn't as good as the actual output. I've tried different 3D cameras to scan, uh, not models, but bigger things, and they are woefully inadequate. I, I, I guess if you went up to the industrial level, you might be able to do it. I don't know. I don't have that much money to play around with. But, you know, if they can get their models into STLs, if they spent the money on, if there was one good enough, or they could, you know, just farm it out to somebody, say, look, here's 200 models, green stuff models or whatever, you know, 3D scan these into STLs. Thank you very much. They will get that money back at least tenfold. And then what they do is, you know, there you go. Now, the downside of that is, yes, their STLs are going to be out there rendering, you know, they're scared that, okay, I get them, I share them with other people in the community, and it is going to happen. Sorry. But, you know, you're doing that. You can trickle release them every month with the amount of models you have that you're never going to make again. You know, you're not really losing anything. I, so that's one idea that they, they could and should, well, I'm not saying should, it's not my company, do what you want, but that's an idea, just check all releases. Mantic's doing that right now. They are releasing STLs for models. So, you know, in fact, you don't even have to go to all that. You could just get someone to sculpt in three, I mean, you have in-house artists, just say here, Here's the old high elf guys that we're never going to release. You know, re-sculpt these digitally. We'll put them out. Thank you. There you go. I mean, you're paying for the employee anyway. So ramble, 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 ramble. So the next one, the next idea is um, digital licensing. Um, that will be, I mean, somebody's going to do this or have to do this eventually. Probably not in the short term, but... If you had a, if you bought out, let's say they bought out a Games Workshop 3D printer, which they get from whoever, any cubic or whatever, but in that process, so they make their files um, just totally independent format. And the only way they can be read is by whatever chip is in that, you know, as it goes to the 3D printer. So basically encryption. So those files can only go to those certain models of printers or printers that have their hardware on makes it much, much, much harder for people to, you know, especially the casual printer to, to use those prints without paying for them. So yes, they can still print lots of the physical object and give them away or sell them on eBay. But, you know, it, confines it it gives you a little more control or actually a lot more control the other thing you could do with that on that model is you could say okay i want to buy a quantity so i want 10 wood elf arches it'll give you a five percent uh, sorry a 20 percent error margin so if you buy you know you buy 10 you're allowed to print 12 just in case a couple of them screw up you know, and if you screw up lots of them, just get good. Not, you know, not our problem that you can't use the machine, I guess. Another way they could do it. Then that tightens in the control even more. It's the technology's there. And yes, it can be hacked, but you're making it harder and harder and harder for the casual person to do it. The other thing being is it gives people who are actually wanting to support Games Workshop a way to support them, an outlet for them to say, look, I like what you're doing. Take my money. Give me my models. 
you know, I don't, they can't, they're not out of stock. The only thing out of stock is my resin and I'm getting that next, you know, tomorrow. I don't know. That's, they should get into the 3D printing market, maybe, because, you know, that way, really all they're doing is they're shimmying off the production from their side. They're saying, look, here, you produce the model. Here's the production means, which is, you know, our version of 3D printer with the interface. Here's the STL file for you to print. Off you go. Have fun. Idea. I don't know. Throwing it out there. Use the comments down here somewhere. Um, so the other thing that they are missing out on. Coffee. They're probably not missing out on coffee. The other thing that they are missing out on, if they are going to keep control of everything the way they're doing, which is fine. I mean, it's up to them. But especially, for example, again, dealing with the old world, like I do, the continuous narrative development. So the world building. They have a problem. For example, I keep reading, oh, this army's not coming out. These armies are on the legacy list. That annoys a lot of people. So people can't buy or are not going to buy an army that is on the legacy list. They can't buy armies like Cathay and Nippon, which actually are in Warmaster because that is under continuous development from a committee which is really awesome, but then they're losing out there. So we're never going to do Cathay. I tell you what, let's do some STLs. There you go. There's the Cathay army. Here's the army list. Sell the book. There you go. A book's easy. Make the book, sell the book. Codexes. Off you go. Print your army. We're not doing it. And we'll tell you we're not doing it. But if they're going to do that as well, you know, those STLs that they sell that you can print have to be legal in tournaments. You can't say, because that will be an official Games Workshop model. So a win, 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 win. Everybody wins. You can play the armies in tournaments. You can get the models. I, I don't know. I need a raise. <laughs> God, this is rambling. So basically, I guess, here's the thing. The the 3D printers, a lot of people don't like the 3D printers um, because Games Workshop is seen as collecting models. It's a collector's thing, which they've put in our heads from the beginning. You know, they were first and foremost a miniatures company, not a gaming company. The game is there to sell the miniatures, okay? Now, some of us like the game. We like the miniatures too. But the, they, they keep putting barriers in front of us, um, which, you know, I, I don't know why. Well, I do know why. It's financial and it's profit-driven. And it has been since, well, and it has been since that executive from Boots took over. And I can't remember his name. I do want to do a video on that maybe um, because the man boils my blood a little bit. Um, that's when it changed into some kind of cult. Um, anyway, not a rant video, no ranting. <coughs> the point being is, um, they, they're going to have to embrace it eventually. They've got tons of ways of doing it, tons of avenues to go to. It looks like with all the Henry Cavill furor going on, you know, they're, they're, they're going for the, the IP, but they are no longer, I say no longer, they're getting less and less of a miniatures company because they're going to have to. They don't have hardly anything in their wagon to sell anymore. Where is my stuff? Um, another route they're going down, and, and I think we saw this in the Age of Sigma when it came out, is to do higher quality, less numerous collector's edition type stuff. So, you know, if you look at <laughs> the 90s Nagash with his big old head, and then you look at the Age of Sigma Nagash. Yes, that's way better model. But, you know, how much are people going to buy? You know, 
if you've got to buy a couple of hundred models for an army, you know, you've only got so much to get out, you know, to put out. So I don't know. I mean, there's, 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 there's swings and roundabouts, I guess. But, you know, as far as they're making models, it, you know, they're going to be do it. They, they're going to end up having to do better quality. They're going to have to stay better quality than the freelancers and, and, and the third party sculptors out there. That's going to be harder and harder and harder to do. They're also going to have to produce better quality than the 3D printers are putting out, and that's already hard to do. So, um, I don't know. This, this is just my opinions and three, you know, three cents. But getting back, I mean, the people, the negative stuff I got for being a printer. Bite me. And I, I wasn't. I, I understand because some of the people that print their armies out there are so in your face about, oh, look at this, I got 50 million and I saved, blah, 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 blah. You know, that, that's annoying. I, I, that would annoy me. Um, and also some of them turn up and they will just print any old crap, um, you know, and try and take it to, to a an environment where people have spent a lot of time and care. And if you want to, I did a video on commitment. Um, you know, people that put a lot of effort into their armies and terrain to have someone show up that just printed out a ton of crap. Um, you know, I, I get all that. That I, I do. Um, I'm not shouting and screaming that all oh, you people that buy the miniatures are stupid because you're not. You're collectors. I get it. It's a big part of the hobby. Um, but by by cutting the community like this in half and saying tournaments are only for people that bought, you know, our models, which I also understand. In the future, you are going to make the community um, smaller and smaller and smaller, you know, that plays the game, I guess, officially. Um, now, if you look at something like Warmaster that has a community that has a committee that every year adapts the rules and makes them better, gets the balance right. You know, there's, you know, the power gets rid of the power creep um, that comes in because, you know, I have to sell this new codex and the only way I'm going to do that is make it better than the ones that came before it. You know, I don't know. I mean, the, the, it seems to me that, you know, you have to open things up to make them better. It's just my idea. And, you know, hopefully they will. Somebody has got to get rid of, you know, well, they won't. But, you know, the make money philosophy has overtaken the, um, you know, uh, make a gaming community and will sell out products philosophy. So, seems to me. <clears throat> anyway. The conclusion being that, um, and I wrote this down quite well, <laughs> for me anyway. Uh, so basically we have a complex interplay of technological evolution, community dynamics, corporate strategy, and then there's the legal considerations. So don't steal. Always pay for your STLs. Support Games Workshop, buy their stuff, you know, when they've got it. <laughs> I'm still waiting for them to get bloody cards in. How hard can it be? I can go online and order custom cards from a company. They've already got the templates. Just go there. I mean, Jesus H. Excuse my French. Don't run. Um, but they, there are challenges coming, you know. And a lot of people bury their head in the sand saying, whoa. Digital, you know, the print, 3D printing, blah, blah, blah. It's not going to hurt Games Workshop. They're the greatest. And they are. They're a very good games company. But they're not the only one. And Kings of War proves that, which I also want to do a video on. Anyway, my coffee's getting cold. Um, if you've got this far, you know, do some comments down there. I mean, it is a discussion that needs to be had. And there are people who are especially people who hate the 3D printing. Why? You know, put your comments down. If it's just their attitude, I pretty much agree with you a lot of times. Um, if it's because you think it's making the hobby worse, 
you know, I'd like to know why and put those in. For those of you that think 3D printing is the way forward, maybe a, a few ideas on how we can move forward, um, you know, without sticking to a rule set like, you know, 6th edition, say, that's it, Games Workshop sucks. I'm sticking with 6th edition, I'm going to print every army that's out there. That's, I mean, okay, that's that's possible, but it's not, you know, the evolution is not as good, if you see what I mean. So, I don't know, put your ideas down, comments down, uh, I'd be interested, um, you know, and now my coffee's really getting cold. Thank you very much for watching, like, subscribe, all those good things, and if I rambled, it's because I'm getting old. And the alternative to getting old is not good. So ramble on.